in the past few years, I've learned several profound things about acceptance. What acceptance is, what acceptance isn't, and the power of acceptance in our modern life. Let me share my personal story with you. So, three years ago, at the age of 23, I started my dream career as a business analyst in a consulting firm. Now, that was an internationally known and prestigious firm. That was my dream career because it was all I literally wanted at the time. Prestige, fat salary, and paycheck, and challenge. So, to make sure I secured the job, I took all possible steps to realize my dreams. I read dozens of business-related books and watched hundreds of related YouTube videos and tutorials. I also networked extensively and prepared for my case interview to realize my dreams. So when I finally secured the job, I was really proud of myself. I was just on top of the world, you know? <laughs> Needless to say, my friends and family were proud of me too. Soon, I started joining my consulting team, meeting my client companies, and started solving interesting business challenges. On top of that, my colleagues were exceptional, the job benefits were great, <laughs> and the career prospect was promising. Now, for a young and ambitious person like me, that was the pinnacle of success. I just felt like a superman. <laughs> Little did I know that something unexpected would happen not long after that. Along the way, I was eager to improve myself, but I, I couldn't perform at my career at all. I was mentally incapacitated. If someone felt like forcing myself to walk when my leg muscles are cramping. Soon, it became hard for me to do almost anything, including greeting my own colleagues. How terrible. I left my so-called dream career in less than a year. The question is, what happened? What can we learn from this? Maybe I can't handle the stress I kept talking to myself, but I knew that that was not a valid reason because I had been managing stress reasonably well. I was also well aware that the working environment can get pretty stressful and grueling at times. I was already mentally prepared for that. I also knew that I am not a lazy bum. Since young, I had been a self-directed, hardworking and disciplined person. In other words, my inability to perform had nothing to do with laziness and the lack of discipline. There must be an underlying force at play here, I told myself. That's literally what I told myself. So as what most self-reflective people would do, I started spending time to look into my inner self. After close self-observation, I realized that all this happened because I was lacking one key quality, acceptance. And it's not the acceptance that most people think. See, I was unwilling to accept that in order to become a decent business analyst or consultant, especially in the consulting firm I joined, I must go through steep learning curve. This may sound ridiculously obvious to you, but the truth is, during that time, even though I intellectually understood that I must go through what I call the amateurish phase for the first few months, if not years, my subconscious was resisting it rather strongly. Soon, all my inner resistance surfaced and showed up in my career. I couldn't accept the fact that I was so off the mark compared to the seniors in my team. They were sharp, they were efficient, they were confident. On the other hand, I was a complete newbie who did not know what to do most of the time. I made mistakes, I produced mediocre results, even though I had done my best. To make things worse, I was harshly comparing myself with the experienced associates, consultants, and project leaders, even though I should have openly accepted the amateurish phase and focused on learning instead. During those months, my life was engulfed with self-inflicted stress, dramas, and stories. All those self-limiting and self-defeating thoughts consume me, really, from the inside. The good thing is, I've learned a lot from this experience. 
This experience was essentially my valuable silent mentor. What I learned from the experience is that even though competence is important in our lives, there's perhaps a quality that many people tend to miss, acceptance. Personally, I think that acceptance is one of the most important, yet often overlooked mental attitude in our lives. Now, looking back, I did not treat acceptance seriously because I used to perceive it as a sign of weakness, especially in this modern world, which is perceptibly shaped by assertive and visionary leaders. I falsely related the word acceptance with inaction, or in other words, passively allowing anything and everything to affect our life. However, the longer I contemplated, the more I realized that my understanding towards acceptance could be inaccurate. I was missing something. Today, I'm looking at acceptance in a brand new light. Acceptance is not inaction. They are two very different things. Acceptance is not weakness. It is strength. Acceptance is not about giving up our life. It is about embracing our life. This is profound. By removing what acceptance isn't, we get to its very essence. Acceptance is the humble acknowledgement of things that have happened without mental denial or resistance and with the accurate perception of life, which is required in the first place for all kinds of positive change to happen in the future. In other words, if you do not mentally deny or resist something, then you have probably accepted it. Otherwise, we have not. Let us look at a few real-life heroes and heroines who practice acceptance in their life. Meet Anne. Anne is a single mother, and she earns a living by being a hairdresser. So for your information, she has been trimming my hair since I was a little boy. Well, about 15 years ago, she was divorced, and during that time, her son was just a toddler. Besides having to raise a son and earn for a living, Anne also had to combat her nose cancer bravely. Those days were definitely challenging, and I would say, so crushing. Fast forward to today, Anne remains a happy single mother, and the only difference is that her son has grown up, as you can see in this picture, and they are both living a happy, contented life. The point I'm trying to make here is that essentially, by accepting her reality and coexist with it, Anne actually regains a healthy amount of control over her life. Imagine if Anne denied everything that's happening to her life and decided just to give up. I wouldn't accept it. If, that's her head, if that is her attitude, then her life could get potentially much worse, right? This is Eric. He is a successful entrepreneur. His own international watch company has been successful for decades. Based on our recent conservation, he mentioned that he remains successful exactly because he accepts reality, which is, for him, the ever-changing market landscape and consumer preference, and then worked with it. This is my beloved grandfather. Well, about six months ago, he was hit by stroke, but the good thing is he has been recovering greatly. Well, he was only willing to adjust his lifestyle and retrain his leg muscles once he accepted that stroke hit him in the first place. If he denied about his life condition and takes no action about it, recovering from stroke would be almost impossible. So as you can see, Acceptance is practiced by people from all kinds of backgrounds. Acceptance is not only for the monks. The fundamental difference between inaction and acceptance is this. Inaction is about not doing what's necessary, while acceptance is the crucial enabler of doing what's necessary. Deepak Chopra once explained that we might want 
things to be different in the future. But at the present moment, right now, right this second, we must accept things as they are so that we have the power to change them in future. And basically, that's how we make our life flow smoothly instead of roughly. Now, up to this point, some of you may realize that you do resist a couple of things in your life, mentally. Maybe you resist the fact that you are gaining weight, or maybe you are aging, you are becoming old. And some of you may deny the fact that true growth can be painful at times, and the process of mastering a skill or a craft takes time. Well, that's perfectly normal. As humans, we instinctively seek for security. And this explains why our brain is good at creating stories, sometimes good, sometimes not good, inside our brain. Why? For the security. And from this point of view, you may think that, yeah, that's kind of natural to create false stories, right? And that is the root cause of why people tend to resist something rather than to accept it. And most people actually resist something either subconsciously or unknowingly because true acceptance is much harder than resistance. Like, really, think about it. This is profound. It takes a lot of courage to accept something as it is rather than creating false stories about it and just takes no action. The good thing is, acceptance is a learnable mental attitude in three clear steps, and I'm going to show you how. The first step is to spend time with yourself. In this hyperconnected world, the last thing we would do is spending time alone. We have far too many alluring distractions. We have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have friends, we have TV, we have everything. Well, even though we are social creatures, spending time alone is crucial because that's a time when we can look into ourselves without the interference of others. In other words, we can become our own observer without noise. By the way, if you are alone in the room and you scroll your Facebook or reply email, that doesn't count as being alone. So when you're alone, do not resist the fact that you have no one around you. Just embrace, just accept the solitude. Have a date, have a date with yourself instead, right? Then ask yourself the following questions. What am I resisting? Have the things happened? If yes, why am I doing so? Is my resistance bringing any benefits to me or people around me, like my friends, my family? Am I aware that my resistance doesn't solve any problems at all? Ask yourself these questions truthfully, and your inner voice will guide you naturally. Now, up to this point, some of you may say, but I'm busy, this is taking too much time. And my response for that would be, if that's your case, then you have to spend even more time alone. <laughs> See, many people actually sweep their resistance towards something under the rug by engaging in endless activities so that they don't have to face their inner selves. All of us actually know it. Embracing solitude is like detoxifying your body. In the beginning, it may feel horrible, but after some time, you'll be able to feel light and clean and look at yourself in a brand new light. So, my friends, do spend time alone, at least occasionally, and with a clear purpose. The second step is to identify the subject of your resistance. Let me give you some quick examples. Maybe you are covering your dissatisfaction with your job by excessive drinking. Or maybe you are running away from a relationship issues by binge-watching television or just binge-watching YouTubes. Or maybe, just maybe, you are creating false stories about your health inside your brain. Even though you have been diagnosed with lung cancer and your situation actually worsens day by day. 
Before you really take any actions to improve your life, your career, your relationship, or your health, make it a point to really accept things as they are in the moment, so you can really unlock the power to change them. William James, an American philosopher and psychologist, once said that acceptance is the first step to overcome the consequences of any misfortune. And I think this is very true. The last step, step three, is especially crucial. After we experience an event and we accept it, we really have two options. We can either change our circumstances proactively, we change it, or we live with it peacefully, perfectly peacefully. Can you do that? Make it your commitment. Let's go through a few examples. Once. I accept the bad weather, which is beyond my control. Then I can change my outdoor plan to an indoor plan, or be perfectly peaceful that our plan has been cancelled. Once we accept that we can't force everyone to like us, then we can start behaving authentically and truthfully. Once we truly accept that anything worthwhile requires effort. Then we will put in the required work. Once I accept that the amateurish phase is required for rapid growth, I no longer resist it. Today, as an educator and lifelong learner, I constantly immerse myself in different necessary and oftentimes challenging situations, so I can really grow. And that is the power of acceptance. So, no matter what you do in life, be sure that you do not spend your time on excessive internal mental wars. Our life is too short for that. If you want to take away only one thing from this talk, let it be this: acceptance is all about the art of coexisting with reality instead of mentally resisting it, and the ability to coexist with reality. Is powerful. Thank you.